Hello, I'm Jason North, and today we're going to talk about Unibright. It's an upcoming ICO, and this is my deep analysis about this project with its current state of knowledge. First, this is a disclaimer. Do your own research. Uh, this is not investment advice. You can pause this and read it if you really want to. First, about us, uh, Rocket Fuel Capital is a global volunteer-based community. Uh, we really are focused on fueling blockchain innovation. Uh, we've got over 100 advisors, strategic investors located across six continents. And, um, you know, we try and do everything we can to um, contribute to blockchain innovation. We speak at blockchain events. We produce um, media and content like this. We manage a $50 million investment fund. And uh, whenever we find out about scams or hacks, we do everything we can to talk about it and, uh, you know, fight it. Uh, because it's really hurting our industry and we need to put a stop to it. You can learn more about us by going online uh, to our website or our Telegram channel. Um, and so, yeah, let's get into it. Unibright, the unified framework for blockchain-based business integration. Uh, right off the bat, I like their marketing. It's clean. It's simple. They've got a, a good name, a uh, good tagline that while complicated and technical, I get it, and I'll explain what they mean by the unified framework for blockchain-based business integration uh, soon. Um, but this is Unibright, and you know, there's a lot of information here that you can dig into. Uh, I'm going to cover the white paper and the team, and you know, all the normal areas that I look at in deep analysis. And so, let's start with what these guys do because it, it took a little bit of time to figure that out. Basically, you need to go back and understand what they've been doing um, and who they are. So Steven uh, is the CTO and Martin is the CEO. Uh, both of these guys, I actually have a lot of connections with them, so that's interesting. They seem to have a good network. Um, this both of them have been working in SAP consulting for a long time. So 13 years, senior software engineer consultant, um, SPO consulting um, wrapped around it. And so, you know, over a decade, looks like, you know, 17 years of consulting. And primarily it's SAP, which is a big enterprise software um, ERP type system. Um, and you can see this guy's the CTO, very similar background, at least for the last year at SBO Consulting. Um, and so, you know, these two guys have been working together for a while. Uh, that's also good. So they seem to be a loyal partnership. Um, but they come from this enterprise SAP consulting background. And um, now what they've got is a product uh, that, they, that they claim and... Uh, they do a pretty good job explaining it in the white paper. It's it's basically like a framework for in it, connecting lots of systems. There's a good diagram here I'll get at. Um, this guy right up here. Lots of diagrams. This guy. So the idea in a nutshell, uh, I mean, I'm going to paraphrase and stay pretty high level here so we don't get too far to the weeds, but big companies, big enterprise companies, Fortune 100, whatever you want to call them, um, they have a lot of different systems, all these disparate systems that run different things in different departments. But ultimately, the, the more they're connected to each other and integrated, the better for the overall business um, and its ability to, to be one cohesive unit. So um, the way this works today is you've got point-to-point -point systems that are integrated with each other, or you've got middleware in the middle that connects them, or lots of systems. Or you've got sort of a cloud infrastructure where they go through the cloud. And what these guys are proposing is to put a layer of blockchain sort of as a baseline that all these systems can connect to and write smart contracts. And these, these blocks are just going to be able to, you know, move across events and um, actions and transactions. Uh, and then they can be pulled or integrated with all of these systems. And so the example they give, which was really kind of helped me figure it out um, 
and, and before I go there, they build all these workflows for complex business processes on SAP. That's their background. So approval processes or workflow processes, what have you. And these are, these are a couple examples. The first is a jewelry company develops new necklaces, which are about to manufacture abroad and then distributed by the company owned web shop. The approval process involves getting different departments and consists of different steps. Some of these steps are dependent on the fulfillment of other steps and some are accomplishable independently. Um, but basically they need to check different systems to get approval. And so their solution is to have this smart contract that interacts by setting states of their respective approval and the current state of the approval process is accumulated in a smart contract, which holds the control flow implicitly decides in the final approval state. I mean, it's, I don't know. You can do all this stuff today with workflows and integrations, but they're trying to, I think, make all the systems kind of come together on one common framework. And they give other examples, but that's essentially what they're trying to do. And I think that that first diagram does a pretty good basic way of, of, this, of this explaining it. Um, this blockchain is, is sort of a, a framework that they can all relate to. They have this diagram, which is sort of like, are you sure, really? I mean, they're trying to say that their technology, Unibright, is superior a level 10 on all five of these paradigms, whereas middleware, cloud, you know, other technologies are not. Even blockchain, you know, is not really high on technical integrity or changing requirements. It's pretty good at data integrity, security, and state management, but not in those areas. But their solution, you know, magically just is a 10 across all five boards. I don't, I mean, I get what they're trying to say there, but I'd like to see more proof of that. And in any event, that's sort of my paraphrased, you know, probably not so great, but, you know, attempt to explain what these guys do. Um, you can learn more on, you, on their Medium articles. They talk about, again, approval processes using blockchain technology and various other solutions, but that's really the one that keeps coming back. Um, ICO Bench doesn't really have much information yet uh, as far as their rating. Um, they just sort of gave an overall, but they didn't break down the team vision and product. I'll talk about that in a minute. They do have a long timeline. I mean, back to 1989, these guys have been working uh, on this consulting thing. And I don't, this is, this ends up becoming a problem for me. Um, I, I like that they're showing their past, but blockchain doesn't come into the picture until very recently and they're pivoting out of it. And so moving into my analysis, um, let's just run through this because I think this will summarize it pretty well. Um, so I, I'm giving them a current grade of 80% and my, if I can get the right zoom level, the status I have them at is neutral right now. I don't feel it's a strong buy or or super negative either, but I, I'm, it's kind of on the fence. 80 is really kind of the minimal grade. So I'm neutral. They're a service-based consulting business, uh, and they are those are very different than software product companies. They have to follow like an SLDC, which is software life cycle. I'm sorry, SDLC, software development life cycle. Um, uh, it's just more complicated. There's a lot of nuance in developing software and releasing it consistently and patching it and evolving it than running a consulting business. And having been in a service-based business as an owner and then pivoting the business into a product business, I can tell you from firsthand, it is not easy. And then add blockchain to the mix, it concerns me because that's not their, their core expertise. And uh, a lot of these service businesses have a hard time scaling. They get to a certain level, maybe it's, you know, single single did or seven digit millions you know up to 10 you know 9 million or something or sometimes they go even more like 20 million but they usually don't go much further than that and um it's just hard to scale a service-based business where you have a product business with recurring revenue uh it you can scale and that's why it, when you look at valuation metrics service-based businesses usually get a one-time revenue valuation metric whereas product at least software as a service businesses typically get five, six, sometimes 10, 20 times revenue, depending on how big they are and how strategic their, their positioning is. So that's, uh, that's kind of my overall issue with them. Um, I would need to see a series of really great news logged to drive up the score significantly to make this a strong buy, which I think is unlikely, but that's what this running score is over time. Uh, as I log, um, you know, I give them more extra points, positive or negative, you can start to see a trend up or down. 
Um, the positives are the CEO and the CTO are a good loyal partnership. They're, they've got very clean marketing, website, brand. Um, must see a stream of good. You already talked about that. The, the FUD or the cons are not sure enterprise needs this badly right now. Um, and consulting business, UG, <laughs> become a blockchain product business. That's a tough pivot. I've done it. I'm not convinced they'll manage that with ease. Um, these guys have been doing SAP for a long time, which is generally not the black belt software product experience I would hope for. Um, anyway, I'm sort of repeating myself here. Now, getting into the sort of quantitative and qualitative stuff, their blockchain service is how I characterize them. Uh, price is 14 cents. Their hard cap's 31 million, which is good. It's fairly low. Um, 100, 100 million tokens. They're, they're total supply that they're going to be selling in the ICO of 70%. So this is their token metrics are solid. Um, their ICO market cap is low. And so that's also very solid. The problem is these guys don't have a working uh, product yet and have clear product market fit from what I can tell. They're in an alpha, sort of not tested or definitely not tested. They stated with an exclamation mark. Um, no one's really seen it publicly. I couldn't find anything anyway. Um, they're working on having something in Q1 of 2018, but uh, you know how convenient that they're running an ICO right before they release a product. Can we can we get the product out and see that there's product market fit before you do your ICO? That puts a lot of the risk on the investors, and I don't like that. Um, pair of enterprise technical architects, unless they release it, that is before the ICO, but um, they haven't yet. Um, team, pair of enterprise technical architects, SAP, um, we've talked about that. The CEO has a master of computer science, 20 years experience in business modeling. That's great, but it's not last five years in blockchain and um, they're, they are pivoting. I wish it was even like a SaaS product business, but um, no blockchain all-stars. They've got four advisors who look good, but they're all SAP, SAP, SAP. If that's their target market, then sure, they're in a good sweet spot. Um, Vision, it's a great idea, but not sure it's very needed right now. I said that earlier. Their community is very small. I'm not dinging them on that yet because we're early. They definitely need blockchain. Do they solve a problem? Yeah, um, they provide enterprise companies a private or public blockchain smart contract-based solution, which integrates cross systems. That seems like that could be valuable to big companies. But again, are they a service business or a product business? And when you're servicing big companies, sometimes you need to be a little mix of both. But it's it's very tough, um, you know, looking at Salesforce.com as an example to do both. And Mark Benioff got out of service business for years to grow his product business, and then he sort of got back into it a little bit. But he really plans to, you know, continues to push all his service business to his partners so he can be stay focused as a product business. So that's a good example that's similar to SAP. Um, competition, likely no competition in the SAP space, if that's their, their backyard. Um, looks like they're kind of like Omnitude, I think. I don't know. Um, Omnitude, I think, is connecting blockchain to CRM, ERP. Uh, so I felt like that was similar. Customer traction, none yet. Um, and we haven't reviewed their code yet. Um, but that's basically where we're at. We're, we're not really pushing 80 yet. And this, I think, if anything, may sink into the 70s. So I'm neutral, probably not going to invest. I, I think they're doing something cool, but it's just not um, fireworks for me. So that's my review of uh, Unibright. I almost forgot their name. Um, I guess in closing, Rocket Fuel Capital, uh, we fuel blockchain innovation through investing and advising. You can learn more about us on our website. You can go to our spreadsheet, which frankly isn't updated very often, um, but we try and put stuff like this out, videos and analysis more than update our spreadsheet, but um, it's there. You can join us on Telegram. That's where I recommend you going and uh, joining our chat channel, asking questions, engaging our community and, um, you know, getting more involved. So that's what I've got. Hopefully that was helpful for anybody that's been looking at uh, Unibright. Thank you.